How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wrote down some questions, so can I ask them to you? Yeah, definitely. So, um, firstly, did you do A levels? I did do A levels, but I did my A levels in some funny subjects. So I didn't always want to be a marine biologist. Um, when I was at school, I wanted to be a fashion designer. So I did my A levels in fashion design -y subjects like art oh. and styles. Yeah. And then I realized that I didn't want to be a fashion designer at all. And I wanted to be a marine biologist. So eventually I went and I did a master's degree um, in marine biology um, after a few years. So I had a bit of a career change. So it's pretty cool that you already know what you want to do. Yeah. Um, what university did you go to? So for my undergraduate, I went to the uh, Northumbria University, which is in Newcastle. Yeah. Um, and then for my, my uh, master's course, I went to York University. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, so you wanted to be a marine biologist after you did your A-levels and something else? Yes, but I did oh. always love the ocean. I just was so sort of obsessed with being a fashion designer that I didn't think of marine biology as a career. But um, I think it's great that you already know because it means you can do all the right subjects to get into yeah. your career. What kind of subjects do you want to study? Well, I definitely want to study biology, marine biology. Um, I also really like geology. That's um, good. Yeah. Um, I used to really want to be a doctor, but now I want to be a marine biologist. Ah, very nice. You know, you yeah. can even do a little bit of doctory stuff in marine biology. So yeah. we have some some vets that work in the Maldives. Um, so they're not doctors, but they're vets. But they work with sea turtles and they help injured sea turtles. So you could cool. even combine your two passions a little bit if you wanted to. Yeah. And if you're interested in doing geology and biology at college, I did both of them. I did modules in both biology and geology in my own cool. So it's very possible to be able to link all your subjects together in ways that really suit you. Yeah. Have you visited any of the reefs? I'm sorry, I didn't uh, catch that. Oh yeah, the line's a bit weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you visited any of the barrier reefs? I have. Uh, I don't know about uh, Flossie. I'd say you definitely have Flossie, have you? I have. I've been to the um, Meso, what's it called? The Mesoamerican Reef. Um, in, I went to Honduras, um, which oh. is in Central America, and that was really cool. Um, but I haven't been to the Great Barrier Reef. Um, I'd like to go to the Great Barrier Reef. Where have you been? Uh, I, I go to Australia because my dad lives there, but I've, I've never, never been to the Great Barrier Reef. Oh, you'll have to go there one day. Where does yeah. he live in Australia? He lives in Brisbane. Okay, so it's quite nearby. Yeah. 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 Uh, when I was around your age, uh, Samantha, I lived out in Australia for a very short while. And while I was there, we got to go out to the Great Barrier Reef. And cool. it is honestly breathtaking the amount of colors yeah. underneath the water is crazy it's crazy you can i can yeah. only describe it to you as you have to be there you have to go and see yeah. it <laughs> um when i went there i went to the gold coast and, and the, the water was really warm, warm. oh yeah it's, it's so hot there isn't it it's like a bath yeah <laughs> sometimes yeah. the water gets too warm for the corals have you heard about that yeah. Yeah. Very sad. Yeah. yeah. And how did you choose your training course? Um, which, the university course, do you mean? Yeah, the university course. Um, the one that I did was called Marine Environmental Management. And so it looked um, a little bit at marine biology and it told me all about different animals and different ecosystems. 
but it also taught me how to manage those animals and ecosystems and how to conserve them. So how to make marine protected areas and how to um, understand how we can make them healthier. So it was very useful to apply in the real world and help yeah. animals in the real world. Yeah. Did you do like any voluntary work? I did an internship um, in Honduras. That's when I went there. Um, and that was good, but I had to pay a bit of money to do it, but it was worthwhile because I did some diving qualifications as well. Um, and then I also did an internship in the Maldives and that's how I got the, the job that I have now. Cool. Um, I did, I volunteered first. So it's really good to do as much voluntary work as you can. Yeah. And you can do voluntary work in, uh, in our corner of the world as well. Um, for example, last year I volunteered with the RSPB uh, on Rathlin Island uh, in Northern Ireland. Oh. Um, and that's a great opportunity to be able to see a lot of seabirds, like the puffins, who come in around summertime. They actually just arrived now, uh, around this time of year. They'll be there until September. So all you have to do is volunteer with them and they're very willing to take people on from around 12. Uh, cool. Oh, so awesome. It's a great chance. Yeah. Yeah. Have you done any voluntary, voluntary work, Bonnie? No, I haven't. A bit young. You know, there's yeah. some websites online where you can do some volunteer, volunteering um, oh. and you can help scientists around the world to match pictures up. So they, they might be needing to know out of 10,000 pictures which ones have a picture of a beluga whale in and it's going to help them with their research and you can click through those pictures and you can help them find out which pictures have the whales in and that's a type of volunteering cool yeah so i can send you a website link after the chat i can send it to your mum. thank you no worries yeah um I really like penguins and the South Pole, so I'm quite passionate about climate change. Oh, good. Yeah. And what do you know about it so far? Well, um, my topic is the poles, so I'm in a report about climate change. Wow. Yeah. And um, my friend has written a speech. Oh, very good. That's so cool. Yeah. And yeah. is that for school or is that something that you're doing outside of school? That is for school work. Oh, cool. Yeah. And, and what did you write your report about? Was it about climate change in the polls? And the polls I wrote about England? the effects of climate change at the polls. Oh, that sounds really interesting. Yeah. yeah. I've also got a book called Greta Thunberg. Features. Oh yeah. yeah. I've, got I've also got the whole Greta Thunberg. I've got a really good fact for you, Samantha, about penguins on the South Pole. Did you know that 50% of all the ice um, on the South Pole in Antarctica um, is made up of penguin pee? Whoa! What? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's no. a lot of penguin pee. That's a lot of penguin pee, isn't it? That's so yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I know a few facts about penguins. Penguins are very... Yeah. I know that there are 17 species of penguin, and I think only two of them live and breed in the South Pole. I think. Yeah. Yeah, there's some penguins in hotter countries as well, isn't there? Like in yeah. the Galapagos, they have some small penguins and some yeah. other places like that. They're not just in the yeah. cold places. When you're visiting your dad in Australia, you can go to, I think it's called Phillip Island, um, which is south of Melbourne. Uh, yeah. That, and they have little penguins there, and it's surreal when I was there. Uh, they, they'd be telling you, the people, the guides that would be um, on the little place with the, the penguins on it, they'd be like, oh, they'll be in around five past seven. And you'd be like, that's a ridiculous number to pick out of the air and say that the penguins will arrive in at that time. But 
sure as rain, seven o'clock comes around, you see one little head pop out of the water. And then five minutes later, the entire uh, beach is covered in penguins, tiny little penguins marching up the way. It's actually incredible. <laughs> yeah. So that's another opportunity for you to be. That's out. so cool. Yeah. Mm. I also really like sharks. Sharks, sharks are scary. cool. Do you yeah. know about the Greenland shark? No. I don't know. So the Greenland shark is a shark that lives in the Arctic um and in cold waters in the north and it's been proven recently that scientists think it can live for around 400 years have i got that right i think i have yeah up, up to about 400 years old so it can just be swimming around in these cold waters for the last four centuries um and they're Whoa. crazy looking sharks they live in the dark so they don't really need to see very well so they often have these little parasites that live in their eyeballs. Um, and yeah, they're really cool, crazy sharks. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favourite type? Yeah. I also really like the Mariana Trench. I really like the Mariana Trench. Very yeah. Good. What do you like about it? What's your favourite? Well, um, I like the... Oak that more people have been to the surface of the moon that have been to the bottom of the Mariana Trench. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think only three people have been to the bottom. I think. I don't know if I've I got that right. I number. But I think it's yeah. very few. Yeah. Yeah. Your man James yeah. Cameron's been there, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the guy who directed the Titanic. Yeah. And Avatar. Yeah. Best film ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Mariana Tench is very cool because you can find all sorts of new species in the deep water as well. <clears throat> you can find yeah. loads of new species of shark, sharks in the deep water too. Scientists are still mm. finding new species every single yeah. year. It's really cool. Have you heard about My the cookie cutter shark? That's a cool mm. shark. I've heard of it, but I don't really know like what it looks like or anything. It's basically like a really tiny shark, like, I don't know, maybe, maybe this big. And it has a really round mouth and lots of little teeth in its mouth. And it makes it, it can feed by attaching itself to the sides of bigger animals and cutting out a little piece of their skin. So it's called the cookie cutter shark because it looks like somebody's got a cookie cutter and just stamped it into the other animal and cut a little bit of them out. And so all these oh. animals like dolphins, weird circles all over them from these sharks that they meet. They're really strange. Yeah, my favourite type, type of shark is a great white shark. Oh, it's the classic yeah. one. The quintessential. Yeah. Shark. <laughs> um, mm. I think my favourite shark is the wabagong. I think that's oh. a really good shark. Um, yeah. They they look like carpets or something like that. They shouldn't be sharks. But yeah. Are, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, Do you have any other questions? I've got no. I've got no questions. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, well, I heard you said mantis rays or something. Yeah. So I study mantas, but I have actually got a little presentation with some pictures and videos on, which is about megafauna. Um, so if you want, I can put that on the screen and then you can ask any questions you want while I do that. Okay. What do you think? Thank you. Yeah? Yeah. But mostly, yeah. I have to warn you, it's mostly looking at big animals that live in tropical ecosystems. So that means That's warm okay. water. So it's not so much the polar regions, but you can ask anything any questions you like hey. all right i'll try and share my screen okay fantastic oh yes i can see, see it. it do you know what type of shark these are on the background those are hammerhead sharks <laughs> yeah i've never seen one of those i really want to swim with one yeah oh, i've seen one in a quern yeah, that's cool. Yeah, but not like in the sea. No. Yeah, yeah. it'd be really cool to see one of those. So there's yeah. time yet. You know, you'll get the sea. There's time. Yeah, loads of time. 
Have you ever seen any sharks, Bunny? Bull sharks. Uh, bull sharks. I've, I've seen, seen a bull shark. Wow. Yeah, where? I saw that when I was canoeing. Oh, wow. Where was yeah, that? In Australia? Yeah, yeah, that was in Australia. That's so cool. Yeah. Was it really big? Yeah. It wasn't really. It was just like middle size. Oh, okay. Yeah. I saw them at Sea World as well. Yeah. So yeah. there, because they weren't near me. Cool. Yeah. My mum's on this too, and she's and she's telling me to say I saw them at Sea World. <laughs> I can actually hear your mum. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> No worries. Yeah. <laughs> Just so you know, you can chat all. whenever you want to, and I can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So okay, I'm going to show you first where I spend a lot of time, and that's in the Maldives. So the Maldives is a tiny little group of islands in the middle of the Indian Ocean. So it's quite close to the equator, um, or it goes over the equator actually, and it's very warm waters. Have you ever seen any pictures of the Maldives? No, I don't think I have. No, so it's, it's kind of like a typical um, honeymoon or holiday destination that you'd see pictures of in magazines. So lots of white sandy beaches and clear lagoons and palm trees. Um, but yeah, it's a really beautiful country. It has lots of big animals and it has the biggest population of manta rays in the world, which is why we study the manta rays there. Cool. Last so, night the thing about manta rays. Did you? What did you watch? Yeah. Um, well, it wasn't specifically about, about manta rays. It was about North America, but they had manta rays in it. That's yeah. cool. It was about, about a manta ray rehabilitation centre. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, cool. So, I'll tell you a bit about megafauna. Do you know what megafauna means? I think, but I'm not sure. Have a guess. Um, big things? Yeah, you're absolutely right. So mega means big, obviously, and fauna means animals. Um, cool. So there's a saying called flora and fauna, and flora is plants and fauna is animals. So it's basically big animals that are over 45 kilograms in weight. Um, and some of these, can you have a guess at what some different megafauna would be in the ocean? Um, sunfish? Mm. Sunfish, yeah, that's a really good one. Um, can't think of any others. You know one of the others, we've just been talking about two of them. Sharks? Yeah, sharks. Dugongs? Oh, manugongs. Yeah, mm. you've got loads of them. So we've got turtles as well quite a lot of turtles are quite big and heavy yeah um dolphins and whales cool different types of rays sharks do you know what this one's called basking shark no whale shark? very similar yeah it's a whale shark so it feeds on a very similar type of prey it feeds on plankton tuna and billfish so billfish are fish like sailfish and marlin that have long beaks and they're really really beautiful cool um your favorite animal penguin <laughs> yeah and what about this one polar bears yeah they're my, they're my friends friends favorite animal yeah they're one of my yeah. favorites they're so cool i'd love to see one yeah. what's this is that a squid? Giant squid? Yeah, well done. So this is a giant squid and it lives in the deep water. It has big fights with sperm whales in the deepest parts of the ocean or some of the deeper parts of the ocean. Cool. And you, you might have already said this one. <laughs> some fish. Yeah, so cool. I didn't know what this was until I was at least 20. So I'm very impressed that you know what it is. <laughs> yeah. What about this one? That's a seal. Yeah, have you seen a seal before? Um, when we went to the beach, I saw one. Yeah? Yeah, it followed us when we were walking down the, the beach. Yeah? Yeah, it was really cute. 
have a look and see if there's anywhere that you can see them but are you living in ireland or in england 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 whereabouts isle of wight oh, okay so that's an awesome place to see cool stuff so yeah. if you can see seals there that'd be cool but if not there's some places in cornwall and up in the north of england where you can actually swim and scuba dive with seals um when you're a little bit older probably and they're really playful they're like puppies in the water they'll come and play with you and swim all around you and nibble at your fins and they're really Aww. cool animals to swim with you can have a look and see if you can find yeah. one what's this one uh those are otters sea otters yeah they're really cute and this one yeah. you already named um what did you, what's this one dugong that dugong yeah dugong and then there's also manatees so they look very similar yeah oh and that's it cool okay so what kind of what kind of benefits do you think that big animals have for the ocean do you have any idea why they're good for the ocean Ah, I did know, but I just forgot. <laughs> so annoying. So <laughs> yeah. no, they are important because they're part of a food chain. I'm, so, I'm sure you've heard about food chains at school, probably. Yeah. Um, but basically, everything relies on on everything else so all the little fish are eaten by the big fish and the big fish are eaten by even bigger fish like sharks yeah. and if we take out one animal then that balance is going to be disrupted so some of the other fish or the ecosystems might have bad things happen because they yeah. rely on one animal to stay healthy yeah. and also big animals they poop a lot so they actually have really big impacts on the ocean because of their pooping and this is especially true for whales so when they yeah. poo they release all these nutrients into the ocean and these nutrients help make the food chain stronger and help that make there be more food in an area so they actually have all cool. these funny impacts on the ocean that you wouldn't even think about um at first yeah so i'm just going to show you this this like um, graphic, which explains how sharks affect the coral yeah. reef ecosystem. <clears throat> so this is a beautiful coral reef. Mm -hmm. Coral reefs are really important because they provide homes for a quarter of all the animals in the sea. So that's loads yeah. and loads and loads of animals. Um, they, they provide cover less than 1% of the <coughs> ocean. Yeah, that's true. Less than 1%, but they have homes for 25%. Yeah. So really important places. Mm. Sorry, I'll just get some water. And they help protect countries, especially countries like the Maldives that are very flat. Um, and they can't really have much coastal protection like we have in England with lots of rocks around the coastline. So coral reefs help protect the Maldives and other countries from big waves and storms that can wash away the sand and cause erosion cool. and cause damage to people's houses as well. And they provide loads of fish for human beings, so loads of food for people that need it. Um, so yeah. that's another reason they're really important. <clears throat> now, do you know what these fish are? They're from a popular film that you might have seen. I call them Dory Hill. Yeah. But I don't know what type of fish they're. <clears throat> so we can call them dory fish, but they're also known as surgeon fish or tangs. So we can call them tangs. tangs. And these fish feed on algae that grows on the coral reef. So that's little um, green bits of um, mm -hmm. algae. It looks like weeds or grass that grows on the coral reef. If there's too much algae, that grows on the coral, then it's gonna smother the coral. And it might mean that the coral can't get enough sunlight that it needs mm. um, to get energy. And that's gonna be bad for the coral reef. So these fish play a really important job because they eat that algae and they stop the coral from getting <coughs> smothered. <coughs> Does that make sense? I am so sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> 
That's <laughs> she <laughs> sounds cute. <laughs> yeah. Go on, keep the oh, glasses, I'm so sorry. Hi. <laughs> no, it's fine. The best interruption ever. So then we have the sharks that live on the reef. Do you know what this shark is called? Lactic reef shark? Yeah, perfect. God, you know everything. It's awesome. So this black tip reef shark eats fish like red snappers. So this is a red snapper. Now, if we take the reef shark out of the ecosystem, if we fish it or we take it away, then what's going to happen to those red snappers, do you think? They're going to get really big. Well, not yeah. really big. Lots of them. Loads of them. So look, there's lots of red snappers. Now, red yeah. snappers eat fish like blue tangs when they're babies. Um, so they eat herbivorous fish, fish that feed on um, algae. Um, <clears throat> and what do you think will happen if there's lots more red snappers? What will happen to the fish like the tangs? Um, they'll get less. Yeah. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Tangs are disappearing. There might be a few left, but there's not many tangs. Now, what will happen to the coral reef, do you think? It'll get covered in algae. Yeah. And then the coral won't be out of sun. Yeah, the coral won't be able to photosynthesize the, um, the algae living inside the coral. Yeah. And it's going to get this algae all over it. And eventually, if it gets really, really bad, the ecosystem might become dominated by algae. So instead of coral, we have loads of green algae all over the reef. And that means there's not enough homes for the fish. Um, there's not very good coastal protection because if the coral doesn't grow, it's going to start to break apart and fall over and it's not going to yeah. buffer those big waves. And there's obviously less fish for humans as well. And in a lot of countries, humans rely on the fish. They need it to eat because they don't have much else to eat. Um, like we might do in, in England. So it can be really bad for countries where they rely on eating fish. So basically, we need to save the sharks, don't we? I think you already know this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay, so there's one other big benefit of big animals for humans. Can you have a guess what it might be? How might these big animals benefit us? Um, if we go and see them, or swim with them, or watch them. Can't think of anything. Okay, it's all to do with tourism. So have you ever been on a whale watching bow or on a wildlife trip? No. No? Have you ever been to a national park? Yeah. Have I been to a national park? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you have. Yeah. yeah, so sometimes you go to special places for wildlife and you have to pay a small <coughs> fee um, to get into these places. You have to pay a little bit of money and that money will go back into protecting those places and protecting the plants and the animals in those places. And this is why tourism can be really good for these big animals and these big animals can be good for us because local communities can make loads of money out of taking people to swim with these animals. So this pictures are of manta rays and this is a place in the Maldives called Hanifaru Bay where tourists come and swim with mantas. So you can see the pictures from the sky of people swimming with these mantas and every one of these people has paid $20 which is about 15 pounds to go and swim with that animal. So it's quite a lot of money per person, but it's an amazing experience. And what happens is that money goes back to some special police officers that will go to this area and they'll make sure everyone's following the rules. And it means that the animals get oh. really good protection and the, the local people get lots of money. So tourism is a really good benefit of keeping animals like this really healthy. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. No, we haven't. Yeah. Hmm. Have we only got nine minutes left? We do, but I'd be uh, able to extend that. So don't worry about that. We can start up another call. Oh, uh, okay. 
Okay. Yeah. So it's all down to you okay. and herself. So, yeah. uh, yeah. so like, it's fine. I'm not doing anything. Yeah. So. There's a little bit. <laughs> There's a little bit on turtles, and then we're going to sharks. Do you want to keep going, Bonnie? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So. These are some different types of turtles, sea turtles. There's seven different species in the world, so there's not many species. And these are the five that we see quite commonly. So can you have a guess at any of the names of these turtles? I usually know the name of one I've got. I'll give you a clue. One is the name of a color. And it's the main color that we can see in some of the pictures, the picture in the top left. Green? Yeah, so this is the green sea turtle up here. And the green sea turtle is called the green sea turtle because it eats so much seagrass, which grows on the sea floor, this green stuff that's around it, that actually if you looked at the fat inside the turtle, it would be bright green. And that's why we call it a green sea turtle. Cool, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then we have the hawk's bill. And the hawk's bill is on the top right. And that one has a pointy beak. Can you see it has a little point at the yeah. end of the beak? And it uses that to, to forage for food in, in cracks and crevices and pull out bits of sponge using its sharp beak. And then we have the leatherback and the leatherback is huge and it travels across all the oceans and it has skin that looks like leather. So that's why it's called the leatherback. Cool. The leatherbacks are really leather. cool. Yeah, we actually yeah. get them in Irish and English waters. So, so cool. Uh, and they're really interesting in terms of turtles because they have, um, you know the way that most reptiles and fish can't produce their own temperature, their own body temperature? Yeah. Leatherbacks have a small adaptation that allows them to be able to control their temperature and allow them to go further north and further south, which is cool. very weird in reptiles, but leatherbacks can do. So it's pretty cool. cool. So a pretty magical animal. Mm. <laughs> And then we got the loggerhead. The loggerhead's really big. And I saw a loggerhead turtle for the first time ever in Australia, but it was on the West Coast in a place called the Ningaloo Reef. And it was so cool. It looked like a dinosaur. They're really big and they're really wrinkly and they move really slowly across the sand like this. And it looks like a really cool sea turtle. And then we have the olive ridley, which swims as well quite far across the oceans. Um, but it does sometimes get caught. I might have a picture here. No, I'll have a picture in a minute. Sometimes it gets caught in fishing nets that have been left in the ocean by fishing um, boats and drift around in the ocean. And we call these fishing nets ghost nets. And they catch the olive ridley turtles and the turtles sometimes struggle and they can't get out. And we get a lot of these turtles coming, um, washing up close to where I live in the Maldives. Um, and we have to help them and help fix their flippers that have been broken um, and hopefully release them back into the ocean. Oh. This is what I was talking about when you could combine your passion for medical stuff and for marine biology. Yeah. <laughs> so how many eggs do you think turtles lay in their nests? Do you know how turtles reproduce? Um, so they lay their eggs in a big hole in the sand and mm -hmm. then they cover up and then the eggs hatch, and then they just go into the ocean. Yeah, perfect. That's perfect. So once they go into the ocean, they have to swim really fast because they're scared of getting eaten by predators like sharks and rays. And when they're on the beach, birds and crabs and things like that. Um, yeah. So they swim really fast out into the deeper water. And then they might take 15 or more years of growing up before they actually get old enough to have their own babies. So they take ages and ages. And once they want to have their own babies, do you know where they go? To the same beach. Yeah. Yeah, so they go back to the same beach. Well done. And they lay their own nests. And can you have a guess at how many eggs they might lay per, um, per nest on average? Hundreds. Hundreds, it is around 110. So you weren't far off. 
And some species it will be 200, some it will be 50. So it will be changing depending on the different turtles. They might lay maybe two or three nests in a year. And they might have, oh, so scientists have worked out that if there were a thousand hatchlings, so a thousand baby turtles, um, they've worked out how many of them would make it all the way to adulthood, which means that they would be able to have their own babies. And how many do you think it would be out of a thousand? Ten. It's only one. So the odds are against oh sea God. turtles. So actually, they have a lot of a lot of um, crazy stuff they have to get through while they're growing up. So first, just getting down the beach into the sea is really hard because they might get eaten. Um, and then there's lots more predators and risks in the sea. And humans are making it even worse, unfortunately. So do you know what this lady's doing in the picture on the right hand side? Isn't she collecting the eggs? Yeah. So that they can, can put them in a safe place? She could be doing that, but I think she might be actually taking them to eat. So in a lot of countries, they actually eat sea turtle eggs, just like we eat chicken eggs. Um, yeah. And sometimes this now should be stopped because the turtles yeah. are so endangered so their populations their numbers are dropping so fast um so in a lot of places in the world there's lots of people that are trying to stop people from taking sea turtle eggs because even if they're yummy to eat it's not worth it for the amount that the sea turtles will go down if the eggs are taken yeah. now sea turtles are also taken for their shells because they have such beautiful shells people mm -hmm. sometimes take them to make jewelry yeah. out of their shells. It's another sad thing that yeah. happens. And this is sea turtles in a fishing net. So do you know anything oh. about animals being caught in fishing nets? Um, well, I know that the blood supplies can get cut off and then they're like, and some of their body parts might like, fall off. Some of their body parts might fall off. Like their flippers. Yeah. flippers. Yeah, true. So often the flippers might fall off. Um, unfortunately, loads and loads of animals are caught in nets all over the world that fishermen yeah. or fisherwomen aren't trying to catch. So this is what we call mm -hmm. bycatch. And it basically yeah. causes loads yeah. of animals to die everywhere, like turtles and oh. sharks. Um, I'm going to tell you about it um, with sharks in a second. Okay, so on to the next step. The next section is something called elasmobranchs. Now this is a really long word. Do you have any idea what it means? No. No. This is a group which includes all of the sharks, all of the rays, and all of the skates, which are kind of like rays. Um, they live on the seafloor. So it has maybe almost 1,200 different animals in it. And that includes mm -hmm. one of your favorite sharks. What's that one in the middle? Great white shark. Great white shark. I and might elasmo. Glossy for a second, and I might just reset this, just because we only have less than okay. a minute on this. No worries. Uh, but keep the sharks in mind. We'll be back to them in two seconds flat. Okay. <laughs> uh, one second there. I'll just I'll stop this, and we'll get it back up and running. I see you in a few. Thank <laughs> you. 